It's okay. Trust me, I'm fine slowing down for just a second. <laughs> Good morning. Ooh, that was nice. Wow. Okay. You know, it's so nice. We see old friends today. Oh, hi, Bob and Dottie. Haven't seen you guys. I, I know I see so many people that we haven't seen in a while. It's just wonderful. And there's new people, too. So, today is going to be a little bit unusual. Of course, what's unusual about that for the Divine Fellowship? So, I forget who I am. Um, I'm Phil Lynch. Uh, Janice, we're the pastors for the Divine Fellowship. Next month, 20 years we've been doing this. Yeah. 20 years old. Amazing. So we are going to celebrate our 20th anniversary the whole month. We're going to do something different every single Sunday. So should be a lot of fun. We had a great Halloween party on Friday night. And um, we had Christopher's service yesterday here at the church for his family. And today is going to be our remembrance of him. Um, anybody that's expecting any kind of a regular funeral, though, is like, mm, no, I don't know. <laughs> Yesterday was about as regular as I can do for a funeral, and it's still a little loose. Um, today, Divine Fellowship tribute. So, yeah, not going to be much different. Um, as usual, um, it came in, and of course, Plan A was not working for sound system. Plan B was not working because the computer is still up to about 14%. And it did this last night, too. So I don't, I don't know. So we've got Plan C right here. And after I thought of that, somebody else thought of, ooh, we, said, we have another Plan D. Now, so we're going to try that one first. And if that one doesn't work, we're going to try Oh, good grief. <laughs> it's just silly. Just silly today. But we're going to do our best to um, pay honor to uh, Christopher, uh, enjoy things from him, uh, and you'll get a little taste of uh, what the Divine Fellowship is like. And I'm going to start off with something really silly, and that's uh, t-shirts that you can buy. So, okay. Uh, well, this goofy company here. Um, I have the right to remain silent, uh, but I don't have the ability. <laughs> if you want a t-shirt, just like that one. What do you call a person who is happy on Monday, uh, excuse me, who is happy on Monday? Retired. Retired, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. Tell me uh, how lucky I am to work here. I keep forgetting. Okay. Um, if you don't like my attitude, call 1 800. Who cares? So, I don't do drugs and I don't drink. At my age, I can get the same effect by standing up too fast. <laughs> What can I say? What can I say? Okay. We do have a couple patron saints uh, at the uh, Divine Fellowship by the, by the name of George Carlin and John Lennon. Yeah. So, so, you started that right there, didn't you? You started that. Yeah, we, um, many, many years ago, we actually saw George Carlin. And previous to that, uh, Dottie had been sending him things, telling him that he was the patron saint for our church. Well... We went to Yakima to see him, and he came out on stage with all of these letters going, Who is the Divine Fellowship? <laughs> we all just went crazy. Be, uh, be, before the show, I mean, actually, as the show was started, he came out and he bent down and he started talking to all of us, like, right here. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. So, so he knew we were for real, I hope. Um, Let's see, I drop this and, uh, oh yeah, and John said, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. <laughs> it's true, it's true. And George, as equally as introspective, I think I am, therefore I am, I think. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, okay. Things that make you go, hmm, hmm. Uh, adversity introduces a man to himself. That one was anonymous. This one was George Bernard Shaw. Uh, we have no more right to consume happiness without producing it than to consume wealth without producing it. So, and uh, a cathedral, a wave of a storm, a dancer's leap, never turn out to be as high as we had hoped. When the well's dry, we know the worth of water. Yeah. Benjamin Franklin. So, Oh, yeah. 
Um, months that begin on, on a Sunday will always have a Friday the 13th. I don't know. It says so here. So somebody, see, I know somebody. I knew somebody was going to try to figure it out. So yeah, yeah. But it's in print, so it must be true, right? Well, yeah, nah, yeah. Check the internet. Yeah. Um, wealthy persons of Britain became interested in education many centuries ago. See, the reason I do things like this is for one thing to kind of make everybody smile a little bit, and where else can you go to church and actually learn something? <laughs> Wealthy persons of Britain became interested in education many centuries ago. They established great universities such as Oxford and Cambridge, plus a host of preparatory schools, of which Eton is the oldest. Many foundations were comparatively lax at first, but as time passed, requirements became more and more strict. By the 16th century, many schools had adopted the practice of giving strict examinations, a special offer uh, officer known as an opposer had the duty of opposing students, that is, framing hard questions to test them. Many a fellow must have performed this task effectively because for the examiner's title was clipped to poser and used to indicate any difficult question. So, now you know. And by the way, too, we're on YouTube and all of you YouTubers out there, hello. We thank you very much for all of your views, and a lot of them remember Christopher, too. We had Christopher's, um, it was his, what's Paul? His cousin, Paul? cousin Paul, yeah, I knew. He had only seen Christopher on the YouTube video for years. He lives back, lived back east. Well, and then he moved out here, I don't know, maybe six months ago, lived in, lives in Walla Walla. He was here yesterday. So it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. All right. Um, I did that one last week. Why have I? Oh, I see. Why, why, why? Why do we uh, always press on a remote control when we know the batteries are going dead? <laughs> why do banks charge a fee on insufficient funds when they know there's not enough money? <laughs> why does someone believe uh, you when you say there are four billion stars, but Check, you, check when you say the paint is wet. <laughs> Human nature is fascinating. Fascinating. October calendar. Do we have Novembers yet? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't. Can I borrow it? Thank you. I got one. Got it. All right. November's calendar is filling up. Article on the back by Janice. So, and uh, oh gosh, Shigong every Sunday starting in the back, except actually this Sunday because... We didn't do it. Did we do it? No? Okay. Usually we do it. Um, Healing Sunday uh, is going to be the 5th, which is actually next week. Um, our, in our anniversary celebration, we'll start uh, introduction to Shigong on Wednesday, uh, widget class on Thursday, along with ARE, also meets on Thursday, vision workshop uh, with Marianne on Friday, and uh, actually, on Friday the 2nd, is going to be ladies' lunch. I mean, you can read the calendar, right? It's online. It might even be uh, things have changed or do change occasionally, so things online sometimes are a little bit more accurate just because of all the changes. Little kids talking about angels. I didn't do that one. Oh, why I don't, what I don't get about angels is why, when someone is in love, they shoot arrows at them. It's true. Love hurts? Is that it? Okay. Okay. Now I have an answer. Uh, at Sunday school, they were teaching about uh, how God created everything, including human beings. Little Johnny seemed particularly intent when they told him how Eve was created out of one of Adam's ribs. Later in the week, his mother noticed him lying down as though he were ill and said, Johnny, well, what, what are you doing? What's the matter? Well, little Johnny explained, I have a pain in my side. I think I'm going to have a wife. <laughs> Am I going to get in trouble for that one? Yeah. Okay. Oops. Oops. That's, that's why Jan's in the back and I'm up here. So, yeah, yeah. Normally we will do a, uh, a video, um, but we've got uh, little time and we're not sure how some of these things are going to take, so we're going to skip our normal 
video and song. I know. I know. It's the only reason you were here, right? Yeah. So, okay. Okay. I know. That's okay. We'll be having lots of songs because what we're going to do today is, you know, we are going to have what we hope to be at least uh, a remembrance of Christopher. So what we're doing is um, Christopher wrote two eulogies. He wrote one some time ago, and I mean a couple years or so ago. You know, his, his little, little bit of a battle had been going on for four or five years. We lost track. Um, so he wrote a eulogy a few years ago, and then they couldn't find it. And when Christopher was getting ready to pass, a couple, maybe a day or two before he passed, he was going to write another one. Well, actually what he did is he says, I need to find that eulogy. I need to make some changes. So they couldn't find it. They couldn't find it. They couldn't find it. So he wrote a new one. Uh, a sh much shorter one. So once they found the old one, the family um, saw this and says, you know, this, old, this bigger one really doesn't fit, it just doesn't fit us, but the smaller one did. So that's what we read yesterday at, at uh, his remembrance funeral. Uh, today, we're going to take the other one because it was perfect for us. So... And we're going to have uh, the board of directors, uh, our board, who most of you don't even know who our board is. So one at a time, they're going to come up and they're going to be reading parts. And, uh, and we're going to throw some songs in there, songs that probably wouldn't have been real appropriate at a, at a traditional service yesterday, but are more than appropriate for us. So um, I would like to start out with a little prayer, though. And it's actually one that uh, I used yesterday, but uh, it's, it seems fitting. So. Uh, loving Spirit of Light, please bring comfort to this grieve, grieving church family. We ask that angels be with us with these loved ones and bring them sweet memories of their beloved. Thank you for walking with our beloved Christopher through his lifetime and receiving him into your arms when this life was concluded. We are grateful for the reunion of this family members here and the joyous reunion on the other side. We ask that you walk with each one of us through the dark days of grieving and bring us some peace. Thank you for your love, your comfort, and your peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, cool. All right. So, we'll see how all this works. Um, uh, what did I do with the... There we go. Nope. I know Janice handed me the service. What did I do? I already lost it. How did I do that? Hey, honey, you still have that? I don't know what I do it. She literally handed it to me like two minutes before I walked up here. Yeah, no, no, that's not it. Um, I don't know what happened to it. Is this it? Thank you. Is that another copy or is that mine? <laughs> you know, for those of you that don't quite understand what's going on, because like these guys are really weird, um, it, Janice and I did start the church 20 years ago, and um, amazingly enough, it's still going. But it takes both of us to do it. I mean, I, I can't do it without her, she can't do it without me, so it takes two of us to be a half ass pastor. <laughs> So, what can I say? What can I say? Sorry. All right. So, I guess Joe is going to start it off with reading the first part of the eulogy. It didn't do what it did yesterday. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. I think so. I think bad. This is the eulogy that uh, Chris wrote. As I sat here and reflected on what the title of this small note to self means to me, the answer seemed simple enough. All is, all is as it should be, and nothing is out of place. God, which is the name I will use to call the source of all life and light, and love is everywhere and in, in everything. The rocks, the plants, the animals, the earth itself are all alive and have always been so. Each one is moving quietly along the path and will, as all things will, 
end up back at source where all things have found their beginning, their being. Thank you. I don't know who's next. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the second laptop we're using timed out, so we're trying to bring it back here for a second. that it really doesn't matter what you believe in or don't believe in the simple truth is God is the source of all things and whatever God plan God has put into place will be I know this to be true if I sit still and listen to the wisdom of my heart there really is no reason to fight anyone to be upset with anyone or to hate anyone because in doing so you are in truth doing it to yourself not them because we are all one in god we are taught at a very young age that we are separate from everyone how can we know any different when everything around us reinforces what we are being taught? You've got to win at all cost. Don't let them do better than you. You need to stand out and make it. So we're in that can you find peace with all the noise? For me, it was the woods and family and friends. I could go out into nature and find peace and quiet. I could sit with my mother-in-law and feel her love. I could hold a grandchild on my lap and feel peace. A peace and love that I have felt with each and every one of you. How wonderful it was to hold each one of my girls when they first came into this world. I've come to the end of my path. It has not always been an easy walk, but please know that each of you have helped me along my path in your own loving way but these last few steps can only be made by me. Thank you for being here and know that I will always love each of you now and forever. Namaste. Our last song. Our last song in this sequence actually can be found in your songbooks if you want. It's uh, You Raise Me Up, Josh Groban. That was very, very cool. <laughs> wow. That was Christopher. So, amazing gentleman. You know, I normally, um, if I do a, a funeral service or something, I will kind of prompt people, ask them specific questions. Um, that's because in normal situations like that, people have a hard time saying things. So, I doubt that that's going to be an issue with us. <laughs> I really doubt that. So, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to leave it open a little bit. We'll, we, just, we don't have a lot of time to do things, but I would like some people to tell us what Christopher meant to them, kind of briefly a little bit, but who would like to do that? Okay, well, you're closest. Right. <laughs> It's, I don't know about you guys, but when um, when you meet somebody for the first time and you can remember exactly where you were and what was happening in that moment when you met them, um, it's a very significant thing for me. Um, I was sitting right there <laughs> the first time I saw Christopher, huh. and I was invited to the church, and I think that was actually the first time I came to the Divine Fellowship. and. Um, and also when you meet somebody and you kind of feel like you already know them, even though it's the first time you've met them. You did that to everybody. Right? Amazing. <laughs> so um, there was something, you know, of course, in his spirit that was so giving. And I can honestly say that Christopher helped me to realize um, who I am. Mm -hmm. um, he said things to me that, um, that really were validating and one of the things that he said to me was um, I, I, I wanted to know what he did for a living because I was like I just have to know you like I have to know about you and what do you do and who are you so <laughs> he invited me to his office and we sat and visited and um, and I said well what do you do and he sat back in his chair and just was like you know I'm just being me and I was like, yay, <laughs> that's something I can do too, really. <laughs> so, um, so just, you know, him being himself was, um, and still is, um, just really, really meaningful. And I think it was the case for most, most of us. Um, I was in Arizona last week and um, when I arrived there, it was so beautiful. The weather was perfect, blue skies, and there were eagles flying. Uh, in the sky and I was like are those eagles and suddenly just Christopher's presence was there and I I saw eagles the whole time I was in Arizona and I thought you know is that you <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and I kind of felt like it was I kind of felt like he was there just telling me you know what I'm free and I'm you know I'm flying uh, you know in the clear blue skies and um, I'm, ex I'm getting to experience this aspect of my being at this point so mm -hmm. I know that's what he's doing and I know that he's here with us today and um, and whenever we think of him he's with us so um, anyway that's all I have to say I know there's others who want to say stuff too so thank you for letting me speak thank you thank you okay we're gonna work back to you you're standing up so it was the hugs that imparted so much from Christopher And I will miss those, yeah. but they are they are still there. Yep. Although his friend yesterday was was at the church, his buddy Stan, that did all that did a lot of the fishing and hunting with him. He he's tall, and I hugged him, and I go, ooh, Christopher. <laughs> so I told I told him I said I need to, I need hugs from you more often to remind me. So. Christopher and, I, <clears throat> Christopher, and I, Christopher and I would look at each other when we would stand in the, the circle and the music would come on and we'd get that look, let's dance. <laughs> that we might not have done it physically, but with our eyes and our heart, yeah, let's do. Yeah. One time we did. But <laughs> I'm going to go straight back because I'll be back. Um, I got the first privilege of meeting Chris actually through my dad. Um, recently, if you guys were here last weekend, I mentioned that my dad had passed away. He, he died on September 13th, and my dad um, actually got a privilege of meeting Chris through, um, which is called the Ropes Course. It was a company yeah. called Serenigo. Um, and, uh, and he had a certain course that he was doing with my dad, and my dad was training it. And they first got to meet each other through that process together. And they both trusted the process together and um, had this amazing relationship. About nine years ago, my dad bought a kayak shop called Columbia Kayak Adventures and offered Chris, since he had a kayak, um, to come and work at the shop. Um, that's where I really got to know him. Um, he lit up and was like, I want to do everything and anything I can to help with this family. And uh, he became more of a family with us. 
and he ended up becoming an instructor and um, my dad and him got to share stories together and um, when Chris first, um, my dad, excuse me, I'm two Chris's here, when my dad first got diagnosed with what was like cancer, um, Chris was with him the whole entire time and he explained to him that when um, my dad had helped him through the whoops course, he's like, I got you this time and I'm going to be with you all the way. And so um, they both were telling stories to each other and helping each other out and uh, it, it made everything matter. Thank you. I actually got to meet Chris. Um, he was my husband's boss out in the area, so I got oh. to meet him through that. And after talking with him for just a short time, he got us into Toastmasters. Um, of which he, Christopher walked away yesterday with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Aww. So his Rightly son, son in law picked it up for him. Rightly deserved. And hopefully he will forgive me because I wrote mine so I could get through. <laughs> I have only met a few souls in my lifetime that truly have walked in God's gift of light. So much that others around him were elevated in their spiritual awareness and well-being. Chris was one of those that truly was sent walking amongst us. A teacher, a coach, a wise man, a sage, and most of all, a genuine loving friend. Always there giving us encouragement to strive and reach for our better selves. To have the privilege of knowing him for a short while will always be cherished in my heart. I will not miss him, for he has forever imprinted his profound spiritual influence upon me. I hear him even now with that wonderful smile on his face. I see him calling to us with that wonderful gesture, waving us over to him, encouraging us with his warmth, surrounding us, saving, rise up, rejoice in who we are, and in who we all are, who we were all, who become one. Love you, Chris. Cool. Uh, I got I got to meet Chris uh, before I could remember him. Um, he dunked me under water when I was a baby. <laughs> uh, baptized. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so of course I didn't really remember him. All I remember is stories through my parents. Uh, and then I did get to meet him here. Um, in fact, it was the first day we came that I met him. It was the first or second day we came. And from that day forward, like he came to me and said, I held you as a baby. I looked up at him thinking, he's not the first to say that. <laughs> and then, and then, I was told he baptized me. That was definitely a first. <laughs> and from that day forward, um, I knew Chris um, not only as a friend, but someone I apparently knew since I was a baby. And even now, I know he's still with me. I know he's still with everybody. He didn't only move on, he stayed here, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And he always will be. Cool. We are putting together a, a tribute for Christopher. Um, we've only done it for one other person since we've been a church. Um, one of them was Andrea. She was the very first person that passed uh, when we became a church 20 years ago. And we have a little stained glass window back there for her. And for Christopher, we're putting together a uh, shadow box and putting his vestments in there from his being a, a priest in a liberal Catholic church and also uh, from us. You know, the one that he wore, that we made here for him that he wore at our, at our services. So, he will be with ever with us. Okay. 
Good morning, my name is Cheryl. And for me, Christopher was a friend, a lifelong friend, and will always be my friend. He also married me, me and my husband. <laughs> so he'll be forever with me. I, I understand, I say that all the time and get strange looks. Yeah. I <laughs> People used to think we were husband and wife because we would conference together all the time. And wherever we went, people would think that we had known each other as soulmates. But one of the things that Christopher did for me when I used to work at Hanford years ago, before I got him involved in speaking publicly, is I got called strange. And late in the day, I texted him, or I emailed him at that time, and I told him my woes. Little did I know that he spent another hour before he went home he took a thesaurus and he looked up all the names for strange. Mm -hmm. And what came back was mysterious, beautiful, amazing. He took his own time and this was amazing to me because when I got up the next morning, I recognized he was dyslexic. But it didn't stop him from telling me what I was to him and cleared up that confusion and now I actually admit, yes, I'm strange. <laughs> and proud of it, right? And loving it. I think most of us here at the Divine Fellowship can say that, though. Yes. We're all, all a bunch of odd walls together, so it's okay. So my name's Rochelle and um, gosh, I feel like this could be one of those meetings where you stand up and you say, hi, I'm Rochelle. I'm Christopher's <laughs> friend. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> more than that, for me, Christopher was my friend. And when I heard that he'd gotten cancer, he was consoling me. And I wanted to console him. And he didn't want consolation. He was, he was okay. And Janice, when I talked to her about Christopher's passing, she was joyful. She was, oh great, he's ascended. And I keep reaching for that. I want to reach for the joy of the ascension, but I'm a selfish woman, and I like knowing he was on our, my planet, smiling at everyone. So mm -hmm. that's my friend as well. He's right here, always. My name is Maria McDonald McNamara. I recognize so many people in so many different aspects of, of their lives, from Crystal to Jessica, Chris's son. She used to be my neighbor. I knew her dad. And I'm proud to say I'm a Toastmaster. Can I have everyone who's a Toastmaster or has been a Toastmaster please stand up? I need to. Oh, I thanks. believe Chris was the founder of the My Time, Our Time Toastmaster Club, which started in Richland and now it's in Kennewick. And oh, hey! Oh my God! <laughs> Everywhere, I'm swearing. We're like, I mean, none of these people I'm seeing, you know, are connected. I mean, Richland players, Crystal from way back, because we're black and we're engineers, it's a black thing. <laughs> Cindy from golf, I mean, just. Fred from, it's another black thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> I mean, Chris was just a joyous person. He was always at peace. I mean, everything I'm saying, you guys know, his smile would captivate you. His speaking abilities. Sometimes he'd be up, sometimes he'd be down, but I tell you one thing, he was always entertaining and you would never fall asleep with Chris. He was motivational. He became a district governor. This is our current district director. And we even have an international... Stand up. This, <laughs> this man is inter, was the 2009-2010 international president of Toastmasters International. Of the world. And he knew Chris. Go figure. His, his outreach was just... Incredible. I'm just very honored that I, uh, that I knew him and that he's touched so many lives. And I'm just amazed and <laughs> there she is. This is it. She was my neighbor. 
just, it's just, I'm in Tri-Cities, that's true. That's true. He's not, he's from Oregon. So, but, but anyway, Chris was just a wonderful person, and everybody being here is just truly the testimony of Chris. So I'm just honored to have known the same people. We're singing tomorrow yes, together. It's just everything. Anyway, thank you. Who's next? I'm, I'm finished. Hi, my name is Alan Johnson. Uh, I'm sorry about the way that I'm dressed. I did not get the memo. <laughs> I, I have two memories about uh, uh, Chris. Uh, I knew him professionally out at Hanford, and the first uh, remembrance is, as a couple of people have already said, was his infectious smile that would just kind of clobber you in the face. I mean, it was an incredible smile. The second thing that always amazed me about Chris is that in our world today, unfortunately, sadly, we, the, the first thing that we, we see is color and too often the first thing that separates us. But one of the things that I discovered about Chris was right off the bat, he was colorblind. And not only that, he was, you might have called him uh, black, my friend, but I, I call him transparent or translucent or something. It, it was just I incredible, his ability to uh, offer, to be loved and to love by all people, regardless of the color. You know, I, we could continue on for a considerable amount of time. Um, you know, suffice it to say that Christopher meant a lot to all of us in our own ways. In our own ways. Uh, my conversations with Christopher are ones that I really have never had with anybody else. Of course, it was back like Hate Ashbury and <laughs> just unusual conversations, let's just put it that way. So, um, but he was an amazing person. We're going to do communion now. And then Janice will do a guided meditation. We've got a couple of other songs and a couple of other things we'll be doing. We'll keep it as brief as we can. Best we can. Uh, why don't we just use this mic? Get over here. Speak into your shoulder. Okay. Or to talk to the hand, talk to the shoulder. Communion is this opportunity for us to commune one another with one another and spiritually. So I'm sure Christopher's sharing in this with us. Would you join us in prayer, please? Loving Spirit of Light, thank you for this journey called life. Thank you for the ups and downs. Help us to live all of it with joy, just like Christopher. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Got I should tell you, we have unleavened bread if you like the tradition of that. Animal crackers if you want to work on our new American pathway. And then we have the chicken grease. Whatever works for you, we're glad to take As that continues around, would you join us in prayer again, please? Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it. Help us to drink in your love, your joy, your peace, your comfort. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Many blessings. And if we run out, we have more communion set up. So we'll yep. <laughs> Anybody want to do this? Oh, boy, Allie got her that arm out quick. Mm -hmm. um, oh, 
there's so many of you. Oh my gosh, I didn't get to look back. That's awesome. Um, I always kind of get flustered when I come up here for like a half a minute because I'm just like, I don't know what I'm going to say. Um, we, don't, we don't ever beg uh, when it comes to, uh, to tithing, anything like that. Um, because we're always provided what we need. And with what we're provided, it gives us so many opportunities. Um, for the different classes that we hold, for, uh, for the different types of meetings where we all get to come together and we can share our knowledge and, and our love. And I know that in your guys' help, uh, it helps keep the door open and the lights on. And it gives us a place and an opportunity to be able to be together and meet new faces because I know that without that, none of us would have met Chris. Not here anyways. So anyways, give what you got. If not, give a blessing. <laughs>